Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm your host, Angus Help for uh, across from me on Zoom, Sam Brownell, and maybe other friends will join us. But Sam, how you doing showing up on time? <laughs> Not too bad. How about yourself? Doing I, great. They, they still have a minute, to be fair. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I have we, everything. We going a bit early. I have everything set four minutes ahead, so that way I'm not late for anything. I, except you're always late for everything. That's so. what, but at least I'm four <laughs> minutes earlier than I would to, be. Today you were you were early. Yeah, one of the very <laughs> few times. It's like we need to have a little bit of a celebration for that. Also, the, the problem is, you know, you set your clocks four minutes ahead, so you're still going to be late. You just take it into account. No, no. So like half my issue here is like, I'll just be like, oh, yeah, it's quarter after the hour. And then it's like I can get going, but I still need to leave it like at the top of the hour. So, you know, just, just uh, good old Angus things, right? It's I don't hate times. anyone and that's why I'm not late. It's just. I just am actively late all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're back. Uh, how, how have you been? Good. You got to go to the Jets game on Friday night. How was that? Yes, I was at the home opener. It was. I mean, it was great. Yeah. Always good to see a win. Um, I thought the team played well. It was, I mean, yeah. It, it was just nice to be back in the building. It wasn't a sellout, but there was, I don't know, a little over 14,000 people there. So I'll take always it. Always nice to to get the crowd going and i mean the second period was rough that was yeah. that was not a good period of hockey um connor but the jets connor hellbuck kept the minute thank really god for did. connor hellbuck uh minus that one play where he tried to play the puck behind the net and totally goofed up on it and had to make the big old save to to cover yeah, his that ass was, that was a bad bounce you know what i've always been a big proponent of like hellbuck get the hell back in your net because he's never been good at playing the puck i thought he was pretty good on friday yeah he, yeah. Did, he did make that one mistake but for the most part he was playing the puck well i wonder if maybe it's just something he worked on a lot over the summer i wonder if it's not having paul maurice breathing down his neck <laughs> uh if that helps so it was good to see that he uh he was playing the puck well yeah but like I, once that once it once it starts going the opposite direction he needs to just stay in his net yeah you make one mistake you get yourself back in there buddy you get the get on the tethered chain <laughs> um yeah i totally missed the second period as having dinner with the family there so we had to pause the game but got this third period in was feeling great about that yeah like sam um, gagne my boy he earned you're, you're money boy I, I was... <laughs> jokingly put I jokingly put three bucks on him to score. I was like, oh, it's just gonna be throwing money away. Nope, buddy scores me 30 bucks. It was 10 to 1. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was not good odds for Sammy G, but uh well, yeah. understandably. Yeah, I mean, like I was like, yeah, I'm just throwing my money away here, but I was just stoked. Like if he listen, if Sam Gagne puts in more than 10, I'll go buy a uh I'll buy a Gagne jersey. If he puts in more than 10 this year. Yeah. If he well, he's he's gonna score eleven on the eighty second game of the year. It'll be his last regular season game as <laughs> a jet, and you have to go buy a Gagne jersey. I think then I'm gonna just try to hunt him down, be like, listen, man, I need this sign just so it's not a total wash, but uh, it'd be mostly a wash. But yeah. I mean it's gotta it would have to be one of the only Gagne jerseys sold. So yeah, one like of Jets six. Gagne. Yeah, yeah. Because I know <laughs> like, the other five are his, his wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> we looked very cute at the game. I mean, I've I follow his Instagram religiously. It's like, oh, his kids are there supporting him. That's, That's adorable. so nice. Yeah. So little Sammy Gagne earning me some money. And yeah, that was a, the first and third period were lots of fun to watch as a Jets fan. And it's like, if the Jets can compete with the Rangers, I think in the third period, which was the most important period competing with I mean, them at that it, point. It helps not having Shesterkin in that. Yeah, and I mean well, they they had played three games in four days, and the Jets hadn't played in a week. So I think down the stretch that has to contribute to it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think if you can hang in with New York at any time in the year, it's it's a pretty good sign. And I I was worried there for the like the stretch of the second period and start of the first and then when they scored and stanley was just i don't know on his knees spinning around doing whatever the he was going for a whatever block there, he like, was doing it I, was I, not yeah but like i don't know that was horrible it looked real bad on him 
it looked bad. I think it looked worse than it really was. Like, I think he was genuinely Probably. trying to block, and I think he just kind of got himself angled a little bit too much, got a little bit too much spin. I don't know what everyone was on his case about. Like, it was, it wasn't a great play. No, but it no. wasn't. But I mean, like, at, at least going for the block in front of the net, like, get yourself in there. I, what I, I don't know what people are, oh, he's spinning. It well, was a sick shot, too. It was, yeah. Like, and he like, put that where it shouldn't have been put. Like, that was such a nice shot. So, yeah, Dryden you Hunt coming out of the woodwork to be like, yeah, I'll put one behind Hellebuck and that's it for the team. You, you can't fully blame Stanley on that one, but the Jets rallied. Uh, they, they bared down. Gagne poked one in. Dubois, what a pass to Shifley on the third goal. My goodness. And that power play is going to be good. It's going to be stupid good. And <laughs> I mean, the, we got to, we got to boo Truba. I think that's totally fair at this point. I, I think, I think it's got to be done now. It was fun for the game. I think it's over. Like we can't, you can't do it every game. The guy's here for the rest of his career. We will, but it's just like, I don't know. Like the guy did nothing wrong, but I mean, like if he's uh, he kind of forced his way out okay, of here, he did force his way out. Yeah. But I don't know. But I, I mean, I, I'm the all return we got for him. Pionk. I mean, Pionk. I thought Pionk was better than he was last year, and last year he was battling an injury, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how he does as the year progresses. But in that Truba trade, we got Pionk and the pick that turned into Villy. Yes. So if Villy ever plays. That could be great return for a guy who wasn't going to sign in Winnipeg long term, anyways. Well, he might have shot himself in the foot. Went to the Moose game on well yesterday, and holy, like Vill, uh, wasn't good. It Villy was atrocious. Really? Yeah, there was a couple of bad misplays, and actually one of them ended up leading to a goal. He totally butchered a pass. Puck got past him on the on the offensive blue line. Uh, Rockford got going, and Villy wasn't fast enough, and got scored on so there's a couple little things like that but i mean he was shooting he's still doing his offensive stuff but the guy still needs to work on his defensive game but which is kind of important when you're but i mean he really hasn't played a lot of hockey because for some reason paul maurice like yeah let's keep villy hanala up in the nhl yeah keep him keep him in the press box for a month and then throw him in a game against like toronto out of nowhere that's a fantastic idea great and then oh no he got burned on a single play i wonder what's going on back to the press box with you kiddo so it's just like yeah. but it, this i mean in an ahl game you shouldn't be you shouldn't be getting burnt like that no you're, if really you're shouldn't. trying to say you should be in the nhl lineup yeah so and i mean it feels like rockford really shouldn't be that good like you'd think that Chicago, well the moose the moose shut them out today they did yes i did see that they like were four or five nothing today uh big bad brad got one yeah he got his first ahl goal it was actually a nice little goal and too. uh lucius got one yesterday that yeah. was nice to see yeah it was a good the young goal guys from pitching lucius. in so it's like i'm excited to go watch more moose games uh it's just uh it was disappointing they were up three nothing and then uh the guy that i went to see the game with uh we bet when the moose were up two nothing we're like yeah easy money easy money and like we got to the third period and they're like do you want to cash out we're like no we want our full money and then we lost it also <laughs> thanks manitoba <laughs> uh, i mean you can't blame anyone but yourself there yeah really i got too arrogant i thought i was gonna win my three dollars and sixty cents i didn't want to cash out at three dollars and twenty cents what an what's, idiot what's the point of yeah. making a three dollar and sixty cent bet well uh, so i was originally a five dollar bet but you know the winnings on top of it was three dollars and sixty cents yeah but what's the point <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you can go buy yourself an overpriced slightly cold uh coffee from tim hortons at canada life center actually you know Jeez. what speaking of which i need to legitimately complain about the jets dog that i purchased yesterday that is the worst hot dog i have ever had and i've had really like, yeah I, I this is the third time i've had a jets dog two out of the three times they've been absolute garbage really i like, never I, yeah. I never really eat at the games because it's so, so it, absurdly expensive it is absurdly expensive eat before but, and then just get beers yeah well and <laughs> there's no issue with that but i was just like i'm so genuinely <clears throat> upset it's like really this is what you guys are like if you're gonna make it 1250 at least serve it freshly hot like there's no excuse for this like yeah that, that's ridiculous well um we so i was at the game with my parents on friday and i wasn't drinking because i was going to play hockey after but uh my mom got a cooler just a regular sized can like a little yeah three whatever. after a tip it was 14 dollars yeah 14 dollars for a small or... can how Ridiculous. like it's absolutely absurd and i mean 
you're 800 seats short of a sellout. Maybe it's because no one can afford to go to games. Yeah. Well, it's like, like I got I got my tickets through the with the moose for 20 bucks. So two tickets for 10 bucks a piece. And it's just because I got an email from them being like special offers, like sweet, let's go see the <laughs> moose. But like the home opener, you can't sell the bottom bowl. And the prices are just that high. Like maybe understand that people cannot afford to do this. Like look at Edmonton there. Like, did you see that photo? Yeah, that was absurd. Yeah. So you break that one down. You would get two small bags of chips for like those would each cost you eleven dollars. Thirty bucks for a thing of chicken tendies and fries and a, and a drink. Thirty dollars. Like that's ridiculous. And not even just like that's just a pop, right? That's not even a beer. No. Yeah. That's just that's a that's a Coke. I think four or six chicken tendies and some fries and just like who who can afford this like if you want to make if you want to make your sport accessible to everyone and hockey has got to be the most expensive sport out there for just well yeah as far as playing goes without a doubt all of the equipment you need yeah I just absolutely ridiculous it blows my mind they're just like can you guys back off because maybe people are like this is a you know, for myself, like we, I didn't grow up with a ton of money. So going to a game was just a special experience on itself. Getting food. Well, I felt like I was an absolute millionaire when, you know, we could. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just ridiculous. And it, yeah. it just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, the, and the amount of seats, the, the amount of butts and seats is going down. Yeah. They need to, the one thing I will say, I think they're trying harder with the in-game experience, which they I know are. we've talked a lot about this summer. I love the players getting their own goal songs. Um, I mean, you don't really notice it at the game because uh, no. everyone's cheering at the time, but I, I think that's nice. A, a little like personal touch. And I, I think the Jets have been, and you and I were talking about this the other day. I think the Jets have been doing a great job social media wise. And you know what? I, I had said that to you. And then yesterday, my sister out of nowhere said it to me, how, how uh, like much better the social presence of the Jets has been online this year, which is nice to see. Yeah, I, I think what happened there is like they hired somebody that was actually around our age that understands that. And well, I saw something where like, I, I think threw like a little LOL right in a tweet. Like it was just super casual. Was, like, yeah. So interesting. there's a girl named Katie, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. who runs the socials I think she's done it for a few years but I wonder if now they're letting her like it's it's started to go in that direction but I think they're giving her a little more uh leeway now yeah I think a lot and, of it was- and I think she's doing an absolutely fantastic job the videos are great um it's showing off the players personalities a bit more and just the interaction on Twitter and stuff is so much better. Yeah. I mean, like there is uh that video of them asking who's gonna win the World Series and Jansen Harkin just with that blank look of I couldn't even tell you a single baseball team out of the, <laughs> outside the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> it's like good old chance and Harkins. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I loved I, I loved the first goal one. They're all coming out of the the uh locker room for practice and they've got the sign up that says who's gonna score the Jets first goal of the season. Everyone's going with KC. Uh Ehlers was like hella buck. <laughs> bonus cut walks out he's like not me <laughs> it was like it's it's great and it's even the coaches are getting into it which is yeah. great to see as well well and i think what she, like i i can't make any comments but i think she saw what they were doing with the blue bombers there the blue bombers have one of my favorite social media accounts when it comes their, to sports their twitter account's really good yeah, yeah and i mean uh the penguins have been doing the video stuff for a while now which is they were kind of one of the first teams i think to uh do that so I mean, why wouldn't everyone be doing it? Yeah, One, but- you're showcasing your players more, which the fans are going to connect with them way more. And I don't know, buy jerseys maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I, I just think it's a no-brainer to get as much interaction as far as social media goes as possible. Yeah, because it's like uh, Adam Lowry is actually becoming one of my favorite guys out there just because of his comments and just how he is and like yeah i'm that much closer to buying an adam larry jersey nate schmidt's got one. close up there i know <laughs> i love nate schmidt nate schmidt's just a beauty yeah always just the biggest smile yeah oh man like yeah there's really nothing negative to say about nate schmidt uh even playing wise he did a pretty good i was happy with him on uh friday night too so just shoot more there nate schmidt that's all i'm gonna tell you um speaking of goal songs and kind of getting back to that uh what would your goal song be if you could choose I would need like 
so much time to actually figure it out. I've, I've written a bunch down. I, I don't know. I, it's tough to decide. Uh, I got a, a couple different Mac Miller songs written down. Cause you, you got to try and it's not, it can't just be like your favorite song. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be like a song that's also going to hype people up. Um, I had fat lip by some 41 was one of the ones I had on Classic. there. That'd be a good one. Uh, loud by Mac Miller, my team by Mac Miller. I just like, I can't decide. I, I would have no idea. That's fair. Uh, I've guap by big Sean. I just can't decide. We, we, Probably something rap though. Something rap. Good. Okay. Yeah, rap no, I, good. uh, on the Jets nation Twitter or uh, Instagram today, I said, uh, white hot by red rider would be my choice. I had narrowed it down. I had a three and a half hour drive yesterday. I was like, what could I do? What could I do? I was like, you know what? Red rider, they're Canadian. We're feeling it. But if I was going to switch it up, go with a country tune. Cause only one guy chose a country tune with the Thank Jets. God. What, settle down. <laughs> yeah, how can you not appreciate good country tunes, but I'd go with a little George can uh, George Strait, and maybe some stars on the water. That's what I'd be feeling. It's a, it's a fun little tune, but uh, yeah, Red Riders getting my vote more more times than not. So, uh, but my favorite choice though uh, of uh, Jets players, it was uh, Neil Pionk because it just like I think he chose. Sorry, I'm trying to pull it up here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up okay. quick. Uh, Dylan Demello cho- uh, choosing "This Is How We Do It" by Montel Jordan. That feels like it's the classic pick of I don't really listen to music, so here's what I'm going to choose. Uh, Mark Shifley choosing The Greatest Showman from the film The Greatest Showman. That, that seems like a very Shifley pick. It does feel like a Shifley pick, but if he <laughs> if he's a guy that's going to go watch theater, I'd like to go see like a show with him. I feel like that's what we're getting yeah. out of the guy. So Mark Shifley, if you're listening, please just, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to Rainbow <laughs> Stage with you, buddy. Come back next summer. We'll go. I liked uh, Morgan Barron's Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Yeah, that's Fan a great that. one. Um, um, I mean, Dylan Samber going back in black. It's just like the quintessential hockey locker room, yeah. eight-year-old, like, that's, that's what we're that. feeling. Yeah. Um, Makes me think of the Dynamite Cup at Southdale uh, Arena or Community Center or whatever before they did the Renos or when there was just one rink, we would always play in the Dynamite Cup before the year started. And they'd always have like a CD that each player would get. And there was always some ACDC. I mean, come on. <laughs> I love There's it. There's got to be. Uh, Logan Stanley choosing Still DRE by Dr. Dre. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's going to be sweet. We're only going to hear it once, though. <laughs> <laughs> well yes yeah, so, like sandbergs we're probably not gonna hear no but yeah. you know we got to hear mr brightside with sam gagne once so you know yeah we're, we're gonna hear a lot that. of luke combs this year good i'll take it <laughs> mr kyle connor choosing one too many by luke combs uh oh um mason appleton choosing bang the drum all day by todd rundgren it's not a song you're gonna know immediately but if you google it you're, you're going to hear that and you'll be like, I know the corniest dad in the world just listened to that song and he's been playing it for the last six and a half hours. He's loving life. I'm going to have to uh, go any, look that up later. You are. Uh, if anyone knows, if anyone's from Camp Arnis and knows of John, you know that that guy's blasted that song way too many times. It just makes me so happy that Mason Appleton also chose that song. I do feel like the Jets could have done a better job announcing the... Uh, players individual goal songs like buffalo we knew months ago yeah that they were getting their own goal song so like i feel like the jets they kind of slid it in on like during the home opener i'm pretty sure the post was made so yeah probably could have done a bit better like job hyping that up but yeah whatever i mean mean, we just we gotta we gotta tear down their the jet social media just a little bit because we hyped them up yeah, we can't just pump tires. <laughs> yes. This is a very serious podcast, ladies and gentlemen. You know that. Uh, yes. Uh, who's going to be the underdog hero of the Winnipeg Jets this year? Kind of a I don't dark like person. how you. I do not like how you you did that question when you sent it to me earlier because you didn't read the start. It was Sam Gagne's better than Sam Brownell, which is true, but you didn't need to say it. Oh no, that was I was just I just wanted to mention the Sam Gagne goal. I was like, I can't miss this, and I just had to make sure you knew. Um, yeah, underdog of the year. 
I think Gustafson. Gustafson. I really liked. I I mean that whole fourth line. I was a big fan of. Oh yeah. I I don't know if we're gonna see that Fialbi or whatever his name is. Axel. Um, yeah, because our fourth line just they they looked good. They and click. I, I'm. I was always worried. Like when they start sending guys down that were on the team the year before, but then I was like, wait, that just means we got better. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're sending, I like, I liked Toninato in the past. I think Harkins has been decent, but the fact that they couldn't even crack the roster, let alone the opening day line, like they couldn't even stay in the press box. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good sign. And I I think so. we complained a lot during the summer that the Jets weren't making any big splashy moves, but the high end talent on the Jets was never the issue. Like last year they struggled, but I mean, you have Shifley, Connor, Ehlers, Dubois, Perfetti, Wheeler. That's a good top six. Yeah. Oh, like that's, good. that's a really solid top six. Then you've got Adam Lowry, who has to be one of the best defensive forwards in the NHL. Yeah. He's the he does it the quietly, but I mean, he's going to be there. The issue last year was the guys filling in the rest of the bottom. So, like Cop obviously was great, Sassney, but you lose those guys and you're like, oh, who's going to replace them? You get Appleton back, you get Morgan Barron in that Cop trade. I think Morgan Barron is a really good hockey player. Mm-hmm. And then the fourth line is actually going to get to play this year. And I mean, who was our fourth line last year? Harkins, Toninato, Sandberg sometimes, but that Vesa. was towards the- Ves, yeah, Vesalina. Sandberg's a forward or a defenseman. Or, yeah, sorry, not Sandberg. Uh, Gusto, but I think he got in in like three uh, games. Gustafson got called up twice and got injured, injured the first twice. game both times. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like Vesalinen was there, but he was between the second and, or the third and the fourth. So I just I think it's so much better now. Gagne Mendelinen looks unbelievable. Yeah, he looks and- big, fast, and kind of skilled for a fourth line guy. Yeah. Um, Gagne, I mean, he's he's not your typical Chevy old guy signing. No. Like, he's not a Nate Thompson. He's not a, a Riley Nash. Oh, that was it. Riley Nash for the first <laughs> half of the season until he got picked up. Uh, but, yeah, he's he's a legit good hockey player. He, I mean, he's getting towards the end of his career. He's going to get to 1,000 games this year, knock on wood, if he stays healthy. But I think that was great. And then Gustafson... If he can stay healthy, I think he looks like he's ready for that that fourth line center role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like ev- everyone just seems to be a rock within that the, that bottom six. Like you don't want to break up Appleton and Laurie. They've got their chemistry going. Baron looks fantastic. I bet if if an injury happens on the top six, he'll slide into any. I of think those he'll be there. Well. I, again, we could see Kanye moving up. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I, I know. Like, wait, well, he, he looked it, but... he looked really good on the first power play in the preseason. Yeah, those two assists he had that one game that was unreal. You don't say. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, I do. I do think it'll be a Baron that probably slides up in that lineup. And I mean, and Matt Alinen even... can very easily slide into the third line. Oh, a hundred percent. I I think like I was very high on Baron coming into camp, but I thought Menelainen was so good in camp that I thought there was a chance he would even get that spot on the third line. Yeah, I'm happy with how they've worked it out, though. Oh yeah, I mean like take it for what it is now, and I mean we still got 81 games of good hockey to watch. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I mean the game one, the fourth line all chipped in on the game winner. They sure did against the team that made the conference finals last year. Yeah, and how far they took Tampa to Game Six? Did they not? If I remember, Six or right? seven? Six like or they seven. went the yeah, they went deep. Yeah, so I mean they fought with the monster and ultimately came short. But I mean they're still and I mean we we team. did luck out getting them on the second half of a back to back and getting their backup goalie. But I mean Halak wasn't bad. He no. wasn't the issue. No. Uh, like Halak looked like he was just pissed off to be playing the Jets and just stopped everything he could until the the levy broke. Yeah, I mean the uh, the first Shifley goal was sick. Yeah, that Ehlers pass from behind the net, insane uh, and great shot. Then the Gagne goal, obviously, just a hard work goal by the fourth line. Then you go to Shifley's second goal, Truba in the box, love cool. to see it. Um, <clears throat> Dubois just fight. Well, Connor working along the boards down to Ehlers, down to Dubois, and Dubois just like 
what a pass yeah, feeds him. It Shifley's not missing that. that. And then even Blake Wheeler's like working his ass off. I thought Wheeler was one of the best players on the ice on Friday. Yeah. I thought he was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, like he, the guys, he seems like he's in his really pissed off zone where he's just like, yo, I am going to play my, I'm going to play and I'm going to win. I don't care what anyone says. I don't need a seat. Like, yeah. He's, this he's is the in best the version of Wheeler. people wrong. Yeah. And honestly, I think, I think there's a, there's a bit of a weight lifted off his shoulders. That too. Like it's, it's a good mixture of I'm angry, but there's a weight off my shoulders. I'm going to do this. Like I did think it was funny driving home from the game on Friday. I was listening to 680 and one of the first guys they interviewed was Wheeler. And it was like, you think he, he'd like, now that he doesn't have the C. Yeah. They you leave think him he alone. wouldn't want to. Yeah, exactly. But I guess it's a win. He played well. So why not? Yeah. Give him a little chat too. And I mean, like, it just seems uh, the one thing I had heard, like, you know, people are still asking him, oh, how do you feel about losing the C? Don't worry about it. Just let him yeah. play a stupid game. And I actually, uh, the night that they played Calgary in the preseason, I guess uh, Cal- the Flames are yakking at him for losing the C and they're just. That's after. one thing that I think is going to be tough is he's going to hear it yeah. all year long. Yeah. I mean, like he, I mean, let's go to Game of Thrones. He should just wear that as a badge of honor. I was a captain. What are you? Oh, well, that, and that's what he that's what he said he's like yeah. i never thought i'd get the opportunity to be a captain in the nhl yeah but as and, long as he's not like as long as it's not a wound to him and he's like you know what i'm gonna wear this as a badge of honor I th- yeah. which he should he should be a i've already upgraded what the hell there I guess <laughs> not that's a pain i thought i paid for that today okay uh that's why i've been chatting about nothing for so long um david riddich is, did he choose the wrong team because he what wants to get did he get it like he wants to get in on games but i, mean, I think i think they're gonna get him some more games you think so okay i do yeah i like it's not gonna be a normal hellebuck plays i don't know 65 game year I think he's going to get like 55 to 60, which is still a lot of games, but I I think it'll dial it back a little bit. I liked um, what uh, Sutter said about who's the Flames backup? Uh, Vladder. Yeah, he said there's 26 uh, weeks in the season and I want to get him in one game a week. Yeah. I like that. And I, I think it'll also depend on how packed the schedule gets. Are there back-to-backs? How guys are playing? I mean, if Hellbuck's on fire, are you going to pull him out? We'll we'll see what ends up happening. But I do think, just like they're playing the fourth line more, I do think Bonus isn't going to want to burn out Hellebuck. Because you look at the guys, the teams that go deep in the playoffs, their goalies aren't playing 65 games in a year. Mm-hmm. Well, they they... 65 regular season games. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Because you. then you need them fresh for another 25, 30 playoff games. Not yeah. 30, but like 25 playoff games. Yeah, at the yeah, at the most is 24, I think. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's 28, sorry. And then that's if you're playing all seven. <laughs> yeah, that's if you're going the distance. Yeah. Uh okay. Interesting. I was just but yeah, I like what Sutter's doing in Calgary. Uh playing Vladar like that. I think that's I think that's how it should go. And I mean, giving Mark from the break from the Oilers is probably something he needs anyways. So, but we don't need to talk about them Oilers. <laughs> um, uh, is there a piece that the Jets are missing if they're going to really go for it this year? Yeah, the, the third pair defense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, His good. Name's we have Dylan these. Sandberg. <laughs> I mean, where would you put someone in on the forwards? No one. You, that, exactly. We, we've been. I mean, unless you have a stud that you can put on the third line. But we already have three studly players in the third line, so. Yeah, I, you, I think. You're going to disrupt the chemistry of Appleton Lowry? No, you're going to get rid of Morgan Barron for some guy. And then, but then does mental lining come out of the lineup? You don't you want don't that. You don't lose that. You don't but lose... I mean, yeah, in, unless you get like a ridiculous player for cheap, it's not going to, like no one's coming out of that forward group, you no, would think. So. so I think Stanley coming out on the defensive side of things is the is the one change we're gonna see. You know what? I wouldn't be shocked if Chevy makes a big trade for a like a really good defenseman towards the, the deadline. Do you move out some of the younger defensemen? It, it, in that my case? my bet would be they trade the first from this upcoming draft and probably one of the prospects. 
Really? Yeah, I think you go all in. I think the chips are on the You've table. You've got to right get now. a top line defenseman then. I, I do think the window is closing there, but there's a, also quite a good prospect pool. You look at Lambert, Perfetti, Lucius, uh, McGrory, Villy, Sandberg. Like yeah. they still have a good prospect pool. I think Arvid Home looks good. Arvid Home looks phenomenal. Uh, um, the, until- the goalie, the, the Deven. I don't know how to say his the, name. The young guy out not in the OHL. I think he yeah, plays they for... got in the seventh round this year. Yeah. I thought he looked good in preseason. So, uh, like, they do have a good prospect pool. So, I don't know how many guys you want to move and, out. But, I mean, if you, if Hellbuck, move... Shifley, Wheeler all have two years left. Yeah. So, your your window's now. Yeah. Your window is this year and next year. Well, and the Jets and, have and... $4.1 million in cap space still. So, you could... Go, you're not going to find an absolute star out there, but you could find somebody with a reasonable that deal. builds that builds throughout the year, though, doesn't it add up? I think so. I'm not. I yeah. So you could get a hurt. better player later in the year. Yeah. So I mean, you come to trade deadline. Let's just say four and a half million dollars. You trade someone out, and all of a sudden you got five point two. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what ends up happening. I mean, uh, it also depends where they're at if they don't have a bounce back year like we're expecting guys are going to be moving out at the trade deadline you could see dylan go you could see schmidt go Mm -hmm. um ganya even i mean yeah send him to a stand contender ganya and menelainen are ufas at the end of this year so if you come to the trade i am going to bet you a brown bill right now menelainen gets an extension next year before Uh, if he if he wants to sign here if he does which i mean like but i could see the jets waving a contract a two to three year I think, contract i think nose. shifley all this will be my bold prediction i think uh after this season shifley signs a big long-term deal here and gets the c what's uh well, how, he's 30 years old how how long is long there's no way that they give him a cadre contract they will no no they wouldn't do they wouldn't shoot themselves in the foot because by the time the contract starts it would be he'd be 31 and then 39 by the end of it yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've always said I'm bad with contracts, but even like five or six years, give him like, what, like if, if the... he signs another contract, you give him the C. Do you give him? A, I mean, a it's been Wheeler one game. Contract. I, I yeah, can't yeah. overreact, but he looked really good in that one game. I think he's, I think he's back. It's, it's, I do. This is the podcast where we have to blow things up and be over, over excited about everyone. It would be uh, boring you, if we were just like in the middle. Yeah. Right. But here's what I'm thinking <laughs> here is, do you think that they give him a Wheeler contract, like dollar for dollar, maybe given a hundred thousand dollars more than wheels? You know, I don't actually think that would be such a bad thing because in five or six years towards the end of that contract, the cap's going to have gone up. Yeah. And even if you give him nine and a half for five years, like I think that's a pretty reasonable deal. He took a took less money on that first contract and now yeah. he can go get paid. I don't know. Nine more. and a half seems like a lot. Nine, maybe. Maybe. We'll if, figure if that he, out. If he bounces back this year, if we see a 90 point season. Yeah, maybe. But again, I mean, we got we got we got to get to the end of the season. As long as he's not minus 17 again. Oh, he's not going to i don't see that guy regressing at all like he was i know he loves golf but you don't want to be going for the green jacket like, not come yet. on yeah no and he, um, he wasn't close but he was the worst plus minus on the jets by a country mile mm-hmm. it was like him and wheeler were like minus 17 and minus 15 and then the next worst was like minus four Three. yeah yeah uh, like it was it was like a 10 difference which is so bad for your top line oh it's brutal um, so I, I think they're, I think we're going the right direction this year, but we'll see. We, I can't wait to get bones back and see what he does. Yes. Get better there. Bonesy. Uh, all right. Before we get to the end, holy, this is ripping pass. Uh, Jets are going to be playing the stars, the avalanche, the Knights, and the Leafs before we talk next, what is their record coming out of it? Uh, three, one, and one, three, one, and one. Yeah. I think they beat the stars and, and, uh, Knights straight up. They lose to the Avs in regulation, and I think they probably lose to the Leafs in overtime. Boo! Uh, I mean, the Leafs are like I'm hoping. Right I'm now. hoping. I'm hoping they're five zero and up. Actually, the Leafs don't have a goalie. No, they're so down maybe. To... I I still think maybe it'll be uh, Vegas in overtime or something. 
I'm going with a 3 0 and 1 record. They're going to take the av- the Avs to the shootout. So 4 0 and 1 by the time. Yes. By the time we talk next, they will have only lost one point in the entire I season. like it. I like we're it. Feeling, I, don't, feeling I don't believe it, but I like it. Uh, no, you believe in it. Abs yeah. to a shootout, not even overtime. No. Oh, listen, overtime is going to be great, but yeah, it's just ultimately going to be I mean, Nathan shootout. McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Miko Rantanen. Yeah, Kyle Connor, good... Mark Shifley, and Josh Morrissey. Josh Morrissey. Jomo, love it. Or do you go three forwards? You go through. You go Ooh. the top line. Yes. Yeah, you know what? We're not playing any sort of defensive game here. Get out uh, of there. Actually, bonus probably will. No, bonus I'm will sorry, have Rick, bonus, He'll have I'm Morrissey taking... or Pionk on there. Probably Morrissey. Probably, yeah. But then you go, I don't know, Dubois and Ehlers, and then Perfetti and Wheeler. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay, um, we're about to run out of 40 time. 40 seconds. Okay, <laughs> where are we finding you on the internet, Sam? Yes, yeah, Sam Brownell Radio on Instagram, sbrownell12 on Twitter. You can hear me on 730ckdm.com and the Radio Player Canada app and 730 on your radio dial. Give Jets Nation a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Go check out jetsnation.ca. Articles now actually coming out on the daily. We got logged back in. And give me a follow, uh, Angus Hout, on Instagram and Twitter. Sam, have yourself a great week. You too. And uh, hopefully I'll actually have the upgrade. And go Jets go. And go Jets go. And be good and do good there, friends. Bye.